All right, so we're going to do some more polynomial multiplication here, uh, a little bit more complicated ones. So whenever you are, are doing, in general, multiplying polynomials, you have to take each term of the first polynomial and multiply it times each term of the second polynomial. Again, this is just the repeated application of the distributive property. You distribute everything from the first set of parentheses to everything in the second set of parentheses. Okay? So, for example, here I have, this time I have a binomial multiplying times a trinomial. Doing this in a horizontal format like we were doing the adding and subtracting, right? So I'm just going to distribute the x to everything in the second set of parentheses, and then I'm going to distribute the positive 5 to everything in the parentheses, second set of parentheses, and then combine my like terms. So the x times the x squared is going to be x cubed. x times the negative 2x is going to give me negative 2x squared. Uh, the x times the 3 is going to give me a plus 3x. Okay, so now I've distributed the x to everything. Let's now distribute the positive 5 to everything. So 5 times the x squared is going to give me plus 5x squared. The 5 times the negative 2x, a negative 10x. And then finally the 5 times the 3, a plus 15. Okay, and then simplify by combining the like terms. Make sure that we put it in decreasing order so it's in standard form. Okay, so the x squared is all by itself, so it just comes down. Um, the negative 2x combines up with the 5x squared, gives me 3x squared. The 3x and the negative 10x, those are like terms, I get a negative 7x. And then finally, the 15 constant term is all by itself as well. This is a cubic polynomial. Um, it has four terms, leading coefficients 1, constant terms 15, you know, just refreshing your, your memory on the, those vocabulary terms. Okay. Let's look at this in a, a vertical format. Still, we're doing some multipl multiplying, and this time in a vertical format, you're going to see some pretty sweet animations here. I'm pretty proud of this. So you multiply just like you would have multiplied, say, a three-digit number times a two-digit number. Okay, so on this one, we do want to start on the right-hand side here. So I'm going to do this multiplication first, just like you would have the old-fashioned way. So I'm going to multiply three times everything in that top row. The 3 times the 5 gives me a 15. Put the plus sign in front of it because I'm going to have a term that's going to go right in front of this plus 15. Okay. Plus 3 times plus 3x gives me a 9x squared. 9x, sorry. 3 times 3x squared, that will give me a plus 9x squared. Okay, so I've done the 3. Basically, I've just distributed the 3 times everything in the second set of parentheses, now I'm going to multiply the 2x times everything in the second set of parentheses. Oh, did you like that? Look at that. That was very, very nice. Wait, I liked it so much. I'm going to do it again. Mm. Okay, so whenever you go to line these things up, make sure you line them up with their like terms. So, for example, the 2x times the 5 is going to give me a 10x. Where am I going to put the 10x? Right below the 9x, right? so that they match up. It's going to make this very easy to add up. The 2x times the 3x is going to give me a 6x squared. The 2x times the 3x squared is going to give me a 6x cubed. Draw the line and just add up the columns. I have 6x cubed. I have 15x squared. I have 19x and then plus 15 at the end. Okay. So again, I don't care if you multiply in a vertical format or horizontal as long as you get it right. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video here on exercise 11. Give yourself some extra practice here, finding the products of these, each of these. Maybe try them both ways. Try a horizontal, try a vertical. Why don't you give it a try? Okay, so here are my answers. The first one turns out to be a cubic polynomial. And I did it in a vertical format, distributing everything from the first set of parentheses to everything in the second set, 3x cubed plus 5x squared minus 7x minus 10, all in standard form. Okay, this is something I want to call your attention to here, and that is the degree and, uh, say, the leading coefficient. So notice this first term here, which gives us both the degree of 3 and the leading coefficient of 3. Where did it come from? It came from just multiplying these first terms together, x times the 3x squared. Okay, let me uh, switch colors here. Again, how about the purple? Let's look at the constant term. The constant term is negative 10. Where did it come from? Well, it came from the 2 being multiplied times the negative 5, the last terms in each of those polynomials.
Okay? This is something that will always, always, always happen. Okay, number two here, I decided to do it in a vertical format. Before I started, though, I put the second one in descending order. I put it in standard form just so it would make it easier to line up all my terms. And I get a cubic polynomial again, negative x cubed plus 5x squared minus 2x minus 12. Now, notice that that shortcut that I was telling you about, like for the first and the last term, doesn't necessarily work here because this, this one, this one, the second one, is not in say, uh, standard form. Anyway, uh, so now let's look at some more products here. So these are going to be a couple of more special products. The first one is a plus b cubed, and the second one a minus b cubed. Well, how do you cube a polynomial? Again, you can't just use the power property. You can't just give the cube to the a and the b. Uh-uh, doesn't work. Don't do it. Okay, so instead, think of this like this. A, whoops, I don't, wanna, I don't want all of that to happen. Think of it because that's giving you the answers. I want you to try it on your own. A plus B cubed as being the same thing as A plus B times A plus B squared. A plus B squared is a perfect square trinomial, so you could just do that very, very quickly. Whatever you get, then multiply it times the A plus B. Okay? I want you to see if you can do that on your own first. So go ahead and pause it, and then come back and check. Okay, so again, that technique looks like this. I would first take a plus b, multiply times a plus b squared. The second one is a perfect squared trinomial, so I square the first one, a squared. It's plus, so I put a plus sign there. And then I multiply the a and the b together, and I double it, so plus 2ab. And then the last term gets squared. Okay, and then I just do the distributive property from the first set of parentheses to the second one, and then combine the like terms. And my final answer is a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Okay? And then the last one here is exactly the same except for the signs, right? So let's see what happens with the signs at the very, very end. So plus, minus, plus, minus. They alternate. That's very interesting. Notice that there is a very discernible pattern in all of these. In both, this one here, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, that's the uh, square of a binomial. And this one here, the a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. There's a pattern here. And if we recognize the pattern, it make this thing much, much easier to cube out. Okay? So notice specifically, um, like the first term comes from, where's my cursor? There it is. The first term comes from the A getting cubed. The last term comes from the B getting cubed. So that part's pretty easy, right? Now look at the stuff in between here. We have threes as coefficients, and then I have, look at the, the powers on the A. Cubed, squared, and then this is a one, and this is as if I have A to the zero power. They just keep descending. Look at the B powers. I don't have anything here, so it's as if I have b to the zero, and then it keeps increasing to the first, to the second, to the third. Okay? All right, so now let's talk about then how we can apply that, the pattern, in order to do these things very quickly. This is, these, again, are called uh, cubes of binomials. Okay. So to cube a binomial, we're just going to use Pascal's triangle. Remember that thing that we started this whole business with? Pascal's triangle. There were the numbers in Pascal's triangle, 1, 3, 3, 1. If I look back to this, do I have a 1, 3, 3, 1? I sure do. It's right here. It's these coefficients, 1, 3, 3, 1. Hey, look at this, too. Look at the one right up above it is 1, 2, 1. Let's look at the square of the binomial. It is a, a 1, a 2, and a 1. It's those coefficients inside there. It's very, very interesting, okay? So we're going to use that last row down there to help us with the pattern of cubing a binomial, okay? So the coefficients, that's what the binomial, um, the uh, Pascal's triangle gives us, is the coefficients of each of those terms. I'm going to have a 1, a 3, a 3, and a 2 if I'm cubing something, okay? So now let's look at the rest of it. The first term starts with the third power, the, fir the third power of the a. So you just raise it to the third power, okay? And then you decrease that power for each term. So it was starting with the three, then I go down to two, then I go down to one, and then I don't have one, okay? 
If I look at the last term, the last term gets cubed at the very, very end, all right? So its powers start with a zero and, and increases until we get to b to the, to the third power. If I started with the plus sign, I am going to have a plus sign. Whoops, let me go back here. If I start with a plus sign in between my a and b, it's going to be plus all the way through. If it's negative, what you want to do is alternate your signs in your Pascal's triangle starting with plus. Plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay, so that's what your coefficients are going to be. Positive 1, negative 3, positive 3, negative 1. Okay, but the pattern is still, again, exactly the same. Um, what I want you to notice, again, is that if I wanted to, this is raising something to the third power. This is raising something to the second power. This is raising something to the first power. By something, I mean binomial. So in other words, if this is a plus b to the first power, the coefficients on the answer are 1 and 1. It's a plus b. Doesn't change anything. This is to the 0 power. So a plus b to the 0 power is just the number 1, right? Anything to the 0 power is 1, as long as it's not 0. Now, further from this, you can use the next row on this, which I don't have pictured, to evaluate something, a binomial raised to the 4th power. The next row to the 5th power, and so on. For more information on this, there is a binomial supplement as part of your assignment. You've got two options. Either go through the PowerPoint that I made you on how to do it for higher powers than three, or watch the uh, video that I, I found on YouTube that kind of does the same thing. There, he uses a slightly different uh, method, but still it'll take you through that. You choose your method as long as you understand how to do it. Okay? So I want you to try that on, on these two. Use Pascal's triangle to cube out x plus uh, four, and to cube out the second one, mn, that's variable is two of them being multiplied together, minus six. Pause the video, give those a try.